in this example, um, just to sort of put uh, what we've learned about arrays into practice, we're going to create a Mad Lib game. I don't know if you remember this from the 90s or late 80s, but um, basically this is a, a good sample project to to practice and you know, get some practice with creating and manipulating one-dimensional arrays. And it uses three parallel arrays. And remember that parallel arrays maintain a vertical relationship with each other. So every element in one array corresponds to a matching element in another array. And you maintain that relationship. Okay, so you have a global, the story, which will be used to hold the, the results of a string, in this case the mad loop we're going to generate. And so as one function ends and another begins, that will cause that to persist in memory. So that way we won't lose, uh, you know, the story that we've created as we go from one function to another. We have a main menu method, all right, in our function, and it just runs inside a while true loop. And if you've been following along, I, I don't need to re-explain that. We've already explained that several times, how that works. But inside of our menu, we have create story, read story, save story, and load story, okay? So let's go down to our first, uh, you know, function here, create story. And we'll take a look at our, our par parallel arrays. So we have these three arrays here, okay? Right, with the at symbol and the open and closing parentheses so we know it's an array it's an array of one dimension all right so it's a single dimension array this array is just going to hold the player's input you know whatever the player uh, inputs when we ask them questions uh, and give them the criteria for the mad lib the second array it maintains a parallel relationship with the first player says but it's going to tell them what to type in or what to enter. And this third array is what will actually build the story. It'll actually build the Mad Lib based on what they type in, okay? So all three of these arrays, remember, they have to have a vertical relationship that they maintain because they are parallel arrays. So we have a basic for loop, and we're going to cycle through here. X begins at zero. In the test uh, condition portion until we reach the end of criteria count and remember since they all have the same number of elements and they all have a vertical relationship if I count the number of elements in criteria that will also give me the correct number of iterations or repetitions for the player says array and the computer says array as well okay so what do we do we're just going to read host and we're going to pass in criteria and the subscript value of x so it'll go 0 1 2 3 4 and then 5 1, 2 3 let me make sure 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 excuse me 7 elements so 0 through 6 okay that would be the subscript value and then it's going to display the criteria and say female person's name, an object, infinitive verb, object or animal, object, object, male person's name. And um, in this case, we're going to call the read host method and whatever the player types in, we're going to save it in this array up here. Same thing, seven elements maintains a parallel relationship. And then we're just going to concatenate to, to build our Mad Lib, right, to build our story. We're going to accumulate values into a string variable we call message. And it's just going to take what computer says in this last array here. Again, seven elements, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. And it's going to concatenate it to whatever the player said, which they typed in when we displayed our criteria. Does that make sense? Okay. Then we're going to assign it to our global, the story, um, variable here so the end result our mad lib will get stored in this global so even though the create story function is coming to an end and normally any variables local inside it they'd be salvaged recycled cleaned up you know they would not persist in memory but because we assigned it to a global right its scope has been declared outside of create story it's, it's in our global namespace 
So in this case, it will persist in memory. Now let's look at read story, okay? If I call the method read story, I'm just gonna get the story that was created, the Madlib, from that global that we saved and stored up here. And it's persisting in memory. Why? Because we didn't make it local to create story. Its scope is not local, its, its scope is global. Had we have made the story local, remember, as, as soon as create story ended, we would lose our Madlib, we'd lose our story because all those variables local to the function would then be destroyed and the memory salvaged, okay? So it's global that lets us read the story and it's, it's just gonna display it and it passes it into the write method. Same thing here, just ask the user to hit enter to continue because remember, we're clearing the console every time we loop through our menu. So we need to pause, we, we need a way to pause um, you know, before that happens so that the, the player can see the output. And this is an option to save a story. We, we haven't gone over file access yet. We most likely will after classes and before we cover GUIs with PowerShell. Um, but for now, we're gonna use a simple method that lets you write plain text to a file. And that's called the out file method in PowerShell, okay? And we're gonna use another method for loading called get content that lets you read plain text. We'll look at other ways of saving do, uh, data too, like saving to a CSV and reading from a CSV, which can be more useful. But, but for now, um, we'll look at out file and get content. So just ways of saving and retrieving plain text. This can be useful if you're outputting information to a log file, because a lot of times a log file is just plain text, okay? So what we're going to do here is just a fancy way of we're getting the directory. You know, we don't know this is dynamic at runtime, but whatever directory the script is running in, a quick way to get that directory is to, in this case, we're going to call script colon my invocation dot my command dot path. So that's, that's just whatever directory we happen to be running the script from. And if I split path, that's just gonna give me the directory portion, okay? So current DIR location, wherever I'm running the script from, and then the text file name that I'm gonna call it is my story underscore story dot txt. And I have to give it a, um, a backward slash there because that, that closes the directory portion, all right? So text output is gonna be the total combination of the current directory location from which I'm running the script, and then the backslash my underscore story dot txt, right? I'll tell the user I'm saving story to, that'll give me the directory name and the file name so I can see. And then I'm gonna use the pipe symbol and pipe the output of our global the story to out file using the directory and file name that we set up up here, right? So my underscore story dot txt. And again, we'll pause, wait for the user to hit enter to proceed. When I load the story, I'm doing something similar. I'm getting the directory that I'm running the script from using split path just to get the directory portion of that. I'm specifying the file name with a backward slash. Um, in this case, text output will then be, you know, the directory, the current directory the script's running from and the backslash file name here, adding it all together, just displaying that to the console so the player can see where it's being read from. And then I'm gonna take my global and I'm gonna use get content and then text output. I should have called that text input. I was just going crazy with the copy and a paste in there, but you know what? That's confusing, isn't it? I tell you what, um, let me do this text input, okay? Text input, text input, there we go. I apologize, I guess that made that confusing because I, I, I had just copied and pasted it from here down here, but here we're doing output, here we're doing input. So we should change the name, okay? So we're gonna call it get content, all right? And that's gonna be from this file here, right? Specified by the directory here and the file here. 
get content that comes up from the file. And we're going to store that in the global variable here. All right, so we're going to, there's a whole video or series of videos we'll do on file access, different, different methods and different types of file access. So again, if that's confusing or gray, uh, we'll come back to it, right? One byte at a time. But what we're focusing on now is not file access. What we're focusing on now is arrays, okay? So saving those parallel arrays to a file, reading them, manipulating them. So let's run it and see what happens. All right. So create the story, a female person's name. Um, we'll say Jennifer, an object. Um, hmm, let me see an object. A freight train, an infinitive verb. Um, eating because I'm hungry an object or animal I'm gonna say cat because I like the kitty cats another object um, I'm going to say a swimming pool and another object and I'm going to say toothbrush and a male person's name and I'm going to say George and then we hit enter to continue okay so that utilized our arrays okay our three one-dimensional arrays here with a parallel relationship so these are parallel arrays now let's read our story okay we'll read our story the story so far one day Jennifer was tiptoeing through the tulips when she saw a freight train this was because the folks at Microsoft were eating into the sky again and again. Her cat jumped off a cliff because the swimming pool could not pat its head and rub its tummy at the same time. The toothbrush ran off holding hands with George. The end. Makes no sense, but that's a typical Mad Lib for you, right? Press enter to continue. I want to save the story. So those arrays, three arrays with the parallel relationship created our Mad Lib. We'll save it to a file. Here's where we saved it to. Okay, so D, currently PowerShell, module six arrays, mystory.txt. So let's go see that text file. All right, here's that text file. It's a text file that I created. If we open it, look, there's our story. See, okay. Okay, now because uh, the story is global, I wanna clear that value just to show that we're actually reading this data from the file and not getting it from anything that persists in memory. So I'm going to close down ice and reopen ice. And let me open our Madlib game again. So if I call read story, what happens? We're not reading any anything from a file. We're just displaying the global value of the story string. Well, since I closed ice and reopened it, it reinitialized everything. So there's nothing there. So if I were to call the read story method now, the story so far is empty. See what I'm saying? Okay. But we do still have, we do still have the value of that story saved in this file here, in this text file. So if I were to run it again, and this time I'm going to choose load story. So I'm loading the story from Carly PowerShell module six surveys my story. Now this global here is populated with something, right? And so if I call read story, which will simply retrieve the value there and send it to the console, there's my story again. You see? Okay. So that's just one example of using parallel arrays to create a Mad Lib and, and then even save it to a file and load it back from a file. Oh, 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 oh,